Hey, what's up guys? It's Coach Johnson and in today's video we're going to talk about five little tips that everybody wished they knew a long time ago. Check it out. Okay guys, so today's video is a simple thing. We're talking about tips, simple things that most people, coaches or throwers, wish they would have known earlier. These are things I definitely didn't know initially. These are simple tips. Now, one is when you're coaching more advanced athletes, um, you know, this is these are the sorts of things that most advanced athletes just kind of figure out and on their own. They're intuitive and they can figure out some of these things. But the first thing that we're going to talk about is one of the big cores that happens to a lot of throwers, and I've seen this with people who come in from out of town and they're training, right? And they, they're they still not carrying the discus right, right? So number one, a lot of times people teach bowling and flying the discus and all those things, and those are great. I, I highly recommend those because they do teach the comfort factor. But I find that every year helping with one of the high school programs that are, you know, we provide the throwing chain reaction system to, we help develop the coach and all that sort of stuff. Um, I find that every year there's probably 20% of throwers to 25 that just simply don't have the comfort factor with the discus. And that means they're going to have athletes that are going to come to my camps. I'm going to explain this and they're still gonna have a hard time. So this is one of the things you wanna do. Make sure that they're spending enough time with all the athletes across the board. So even your better athletes who pick this up intuitively will get better at releasing and flying that discus. And then your athletes that are struggling in the beginning phases, you're gonna see that this is huge. This is one of those instant 20, 30 foot changes as soon as they start carrying that discus right because well, here's why. A lot of athletes are doing a lot of different things and they always have the sensation that the discus is going to fall out of their hand. And when that happens, it overrides all technical feeling, right? They're supposed to feel where their shoulders are, their hip or their foot, or feel what a motion feels like. And if and if that discus feels like it's coming out of their hand, there it, it's over. So that's number one, okay? Well, I should say number five. Number four, that one of the things that I, that again, it's an intuitive thing, and this is where some people may agree or disagree. What I'm gonna do is explain here in a second. Okay, so now let's look at that. What is that? Well, we've got one simple thing. It's really important to understand, you know, a lot of people talk about how do we get the, the left leg to the middle of the throw or into the power position correctly and what is the position. So you see a lot of people do this, they start here and they pivot. Now I know people and I see even some advanced athletes doing that. Here's what I always suggest. Have your thrower always work on opening it and turning this. You see this? This position here. Recently I just did a video analysis. One of our athletes uh, sent in from Australia and the athlete is doing here, putting the foot down and literally getting to this position. So they're opening the foot correctly, but they're not having the right leg follow the opening left. You see that? And that's what we wanna see so that we can really smash that hip through. That's gonna be a really key thing. So remember, we're gonna not only open the foot, but we always have to have this following. So when you see people doing this, and then doing this, <clears throat> at any point, if you landed in a full throw and did this, you're gonna fly right through the block and you're gonna not be training this delivery side correctly. So open the foot and make sure that the right foot follows. This is a really simple thing to add in all your drilling motions. You're always gonna feel this, you're always feeling that, loaded up on the ball. We always wanna be in this position so that we're training that feeling and how we're gonna be coordinating the upper body. Simple thing, I highly recommend that you include that uh, in your training. Okay, so number three is don't shift your hips at the finish. There's a lot of coaches, I've recently uh, have a lot of athletes who come into a club and they're being taught to push their hips or push their hips. They're teaching to go here and go up. Now let's look at that from a physics standpoint. How does that work? If everything is supposed to go far this way and you train everything to go this way, I know the argument is speed vertical transfer, but that's not how it works. This side goes vertical 
to, to an extent, we always talk about this. We want to hit a vertical shin. We don't want to have too much of this. Are there a lot of throwers you can point to that do that? There are, but what's most optimal and what you've been seeing over the course of especially the last decade is how we work on here. Look at somebody like Daniel Stahl in the discus. Look at Ryan Krauser in the shot put. Uh, you're going to see these guys just work in that ground with that block. Now, with that said, this side is vertical and stopping, and this side keeps moving. So, don't think this side goes up. If you notice, and this here is my center line to the sector, and this is where I need to throw, and I start going here, where are my hips facing? They're facing down the right sector or outside the right sector. What's going to wind up happening more often than not? I'm gonna have sector fouls. So what happens when you teach a, th a thrower to extend, right? If they're extending the, the right side, where are the hips? They're no longer rotating. They're not getting into the throw. Look where my shoulder is. Look where my shoulder is. Now I see kids that do this. They finish pretty good, but look where I'm at. So what happens when I straighten them out? They're blocking too late. So make sure that you're not teaching vertical. It's not a hip up it's a hip twist, especially in the discus. In the shot, it has to turn as well and lift into the throw. So if I'm teaching any of my throws where I'm here, and even in the glide shot, I'm gonna pull down and drive the hip here, we never want the hip going up, we want the hip turning into the center of the sector. Okay, so that's number three. Another thing that I see and that I, I would have learned when I was younger, I learned how the sweep, now fortunately, in my teachings, and I had very limited coaching. My dad didn't know really was up, but we got to meet people, and those people generally taught me pretty much the right way. As a coach, I've seen how many athletes I've had to correct when they are taught to kick up and kick around. It is not a soccer kick or a pendulum kick. Sometimes we see this motion where athletes are kicking up and they're coming across. Now, when you notice that, when you come up and down, you have this jerk, 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 right? Trying to throw. You want to have the sweep leg out wide and rotational so that you can turn into the throw. So again, if you watch me come here and you see me kick it wide and you see it, see how it's gonna rotate, we don't wanna have a foot that's going here and kicking mm -hmm. this way. You see how that creates shift. So remember, a simple thing with the sweep, one of the drills, we have a, a drill that we teach inside the throwing chain reaction system and at camps, we set up we teach, it's almost like a roundhouse kick. You're teaching that round motion of how to create and generate action out of the sweep leg, and it has to be wide and rotational. Really important. And that's gonna bring us to our number one tip that things I wish I would have known or things I wish everybody would do because it's gonna develop everybody a much faster. And number one is setting up the start. I just recently have, uh, we have a video, it's either come out or it's coming out, that is about setting up pillar one. One of the first things we gotta do is we are doing multiple objectives at the start. We talk about that extensively inside the throwing chain reaction. That's the basis of the system we talked about. What you set up is what you're gonna reflect throughout the throw. We see a lot of athletes shifting and they wind. So they bring the discus across and then they start winding. They shift and then that winds up cutting them in. You see kids when they're doing this, a lot of young throwers. Now I understand a wind back and forth where we're twisting, but that's the key. Number one, you stay center and you twist. You don't shift and dip. And by shift and dip, I mean bringing the discus and doing this kind of stuff, because now you've got this motion into the throw, and this tends to lead to this kind of motion, which I talked about in number two with the sweep. And I have an athlete right now that we trained out of that. Not because her coaches didn't want her to do well or weren't trying their best is because they just simply didn't understand it. So what do we want to do? If we create a level twisting motion here, we're going to create that motion that's going to help naturally bring you into that wide motion that I talked about as the number two thing. So these are five quick things that again on the rotational throws and again it's the same thing if I'm in the shot put, right? I want that nice and wide. For my number two, I'm going to stay nice and center. 
we've coached that throughout the years and this is one of the ways that we quickly get athletes on track very fast and again inside the system just to pillar one and two we have 22 drills does that mean you're gonna learn 22 drills absolutely not it means you are gonna pick the drills that you need from those two pillars and that might be five or six and those are the ones that are going to be your individual formula. So remember, if you're interested in learning more about throws training, remember throwing chain reaction system is designed to teach you the throw and help you identify weaknesses in the throw to train them, correct them, to improve the throws faster. Okay, guys, so hopefully you like this video. Be sure to hit the like button, hit that notification, subscribe, because that keeps the channel growing, and that's how we can keep bringing you videos. And be sure to share this with somebody who you feel could learn to help them improve and if you'd like more information check the links below for the throwing chain reaction system help you unlock your potential thanks guys see you on the next video